Uh, let's return to the issue of Valdo Calacane and the abject level of failure exposed in not just Panorama but in this Col um, Care Quality Commission report uh, into the absolute lack of care in the community that he received that meant that he was on the streets not taking his medication and as a paranoid schizophrenic uh, killed three people, uh, Barnaby Weber, Grace O'Malley, Kuma, 19 year old students on a, just on the way home from a night out and uh, caretaker and father Ian uh, Coates back in June last year. Uh, let's talk about this with Dr James Treadwell. Uh, he's a professor in criminology, health, education, policing and sciences. Uh, good afternoon to you, James. Good afternoon, Julia. Thanks for joining us. Look, you're far more of an expert in this field than most of us who are talking about this. Um, what do you make of the findings from the Panorama report? The, the after, of course, the family got hold of the medical records for, for of, of Valdo uh, yeah, but also the CQC report. I think it, it's shocking, but also not shocking. And it's more shocking for the fact that it's not shocking now because we've been having these debates time and time again yeah. about entirely the same thing. And I've seen people, for example, talking about um, the, the case of uh, Jonathan Zito, who was murdered in 1992, as, as a kind of comparison. But for me, um, coming from the city of Birmingham, I only have to think back to um, the case of Christina Edkins, who was a, a young schoolgirl on a bus, almost entirely the same thing, randomly yeah. targeted by someone who was clearly very mentally ill, um, where, in essence, the criminal justice system working in collaboration with health provision should have had a, a, a much better handle on things. Yeah. The interesting thing is very often how this is framed is it's framed as failures of the criminal justice system. What we're now, I think, starting to recognise is that there are also widespread failures actually in, in, in the National Health Service and in the National Health Service's ability to reach out and, and deal with those individuals who are escalating risk but 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 that risk is is telegraphed and there's very often yeah. a chance to to reach out and prevent these things should the mechanisms be in place and, and it, again and it, in the case of adicalicate it was really really clear he was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic he was repeatedly involved in violent incidents one in which a woman was so scared she jumped out of her own window of her home and and got severe spinal injuries as a result you know that's a bit of a red flag you think he kept being taken back into uh, into institutional care and then you know he'd say no I'm fine now and then he'd go out and then again and again people who were dealing with him and again passed between pillar and post say oh, you know we, we believe he's not taking his medication what do we do about that and then when he doesn't turn up he doesn't take his medication they go well we're done with you now it's up to your GP well the GP's got no power over somebody unless they turn I mean and again, the family, it's, it does seem very sad that the, the, the families of, of, uh, of Barney B. Weber and Grace O'Malley seem to sort of be blaming, in some ways, the, the, the family of Ada Kalikane. The mother was a nurse, uh, a, a brother was, was a student. You know, they didn't know, they didn't have the full picture. They knew nothing about the violence. They didn't, they didn't know how severe it was. And they weren't privy to his medical notes, in which a psychiatrist had actually written they believed he could go on to kill. Absolutely. But since 2007, we've had community treatment orders and we should have um, mental health outreach teams that are essentially going out to people and, yeah. and ensuring that they are taking the antipsychotic medication that they should be taking that makes them stable in the community. And that should be backed with... in in, in, in Cullacane's case, he was he was also known to the police, so there was yeah. an escalation in that he was actually on on a warrant at the time. So there is also the ability, or could have been the ability, putting him front of him in front of the courts, noting him as someone who's non-compliant to, for example, yeah. um, stabilise him through um, mental health treatment, not necessarily in the highest level, because we only have three secure hospitals where we treat those who are really kind of extreme, yeah. and that can also involve those who've been convicted of. Of yeah. grave but that's and it. But, but he, he wouldn't have been an extreme risk if he was taking his medication. But they could have ensured he was taking his medication. Now, does this come down to? Because we're going to have a lot of lessons learned. All that we're going to have all that nonsense, and it's all a load of, frankly, word beginning with B and ending in CKS. Because you know that, and I know that lessons are never learned. What? What? What, what, what does it come down to? Is it? Is it fundamentally money? Is it incompetence? Is it just sort of? buck passing, bad bureaucracy and not pe institutions not talking to each other. What, what's the issue? 
I don't think there is a single issue. I think in, in many of these cases that there are multiple issues that, that spread across various different agencies. But that does also suggest to me that, that part of the problem is that, that there isn't necessarily the coordination between those agencies that should exist and therefore kind of changing culture to, to create the opportunities to prevent should be partly what's being looked at. You know, and and, and but, but there are multiple failures that, that happen in multiple places. That said, I do think you, you get to a point where you recognise that, that at least in part it is a failure to, to adequately recognise the, the, the scale of the problem and, and to properly resource. And, you know, we've seen, for example, the police massively, massively um, involved in, in, in the policing of mental health. That's why, for example, a lot of police forces have introduced right, right person, right care to try and get the NHS to try and take more responsibility for, for dealing with those who are unwell in the community. Of course, the thing with that is that the police need to be involved in some instances yeah. where there is a risk of violence towards, for example, um, those the, those community teams that should be doing the sort of muscular outreach to individuals who but, are dangerous. But and, haven't the, the police said only, you know, recently, you know, you know, less than a year ago, look, we, we just can't, we, can, we can't do our policing job because we're basically dealing with mental health issues the whole time. So we, we know there's a problem on the streets, but we also know the police, the police can't have every single PC tied up with dealing with someone who's mentally ill. All day, Absolutely. Every day. I mean, it's, it, in some ways, it's about recognising um, those cases where, where there is there is a risk, where there is clear escalation, and where it, there is a necessity to act. And it isn't. And, and, it, and, and what frustrates me to some extent is a lot of this debate. Therefore, becomes a kind of: Do we treat people in institutions and kind of bring back institutions, which both sides of the political spectrum, in some ways, were, were, were for um, the, the reduction of kind of institutionalised care and we don't have yeah. an awful lot of that now probably too little of it but but there are middle ways as well you know yeah. it, or there could be middle ways the use of for example probation service approved premises particularly with mentally disordered offenders where they their behavior tends to be escalating so you can stabilize and then supervise and continue to monitor that that, that could easily be a possibility, but it's shocking in, in many ways that the number of facilities, the number of approved premises in the country that specialise in doing that, just two, the, you know. Yeah. It, it just, there, just, there just aren't enough, enough of them. I, There's I think just not enough provision. What you said at the beginning, you know, it's shocking, but it's not shocking anymore. We go, well, there you go, what a surprise, absolute abject failure. Does there need to, just find it, does there need to be more sort of individual accountability and that, that people make decisions, they could write this or that in the medical notes, they can make a decision, well, We'll just discharge him because he's not turning up and he's not taking his medication and not our problem anymore. That actually, I'm not talking about retribution. I'm not, you know, people can't be responsible for everything that some other human being does. But actually, fundamentally, if it's your job to keep that person not only safe for themselves but safe, the community safe from that person, that, that there needs to be some, some consequence because otherwise the consequences are felt by two students called Barnaby and Grace and a dad called Ian. Yeah, I think, and I think that is absolutely a, a great point. And, and I'm not necessarily saying individual accountability through a sort of uh, through a process that, that then kind of reacts punitively, because we know, for example, that we don't have enough people doing good and effective outreach work, uh, you know, with exactly these sorts of cases where it goes wrong. But I think it would be nice to move towards a position where we are, were thinking a little bit more about where it goes wrong and how potentially we could then make it go right. You know, yeah. could, can we find and can we spot that there are significant patterns in, in some instances where, you know, there, there are, are, are gaps and they highlight real areas where, where we could intervene. And I do think where I see that, that very often it's around an escalation in, in, in violent offending. And there are two things that tend to come out, in, in, including in those cases that I've mentioned, which is either recent release from, from prison custody or recent contact with the courts or, 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 or the the police um, but I'm not putting the blame on the prison service or the police it's about how now I think the NHS and particularly those kind of community outreach teams work across and work with a, a kind of different mindset from from healthcare sometimes yeah. towards you know essentially community 
safety and prevention. Yeah, but get, those and things aren't mantras, no, but, but they, they get it wrong a lot. And, they and, and, they and get it wrong, wrong too often. And, and, the, and the, again, it's that trade-off between the rights of the individual but the rights of other people to be safe from that individual, indeed.